This week, Conflict Zone is in Stockholm to talk to Morgan Johansen, Sweden Minister of Justice and Migration. After terror attack and increasing tension, Sweden debates its political future and tests its values. Has the Swedish model of hospitality and integration reached its limit? Morgan Johansen, welcome to Conflict Zone. Islamophobia, anti-Semitism, growth of extreme right movements and parties, plenty of signs that the Swedish model of tolerance has reached its limits, hasn't it? No, I, I wouldn't phrase it like that. Um, well, you know, there, we have uh, also, uh, of course, uh, xenophobic parties and we have movements in Sweden also in, in that sense. but. My sense is that that kind of, of uh, feelings and, uh, and uh, po uh, points in the, in the discussion, that has actually peaked. Uh, you know, there is a party, Sweden, the Sweden Democrats, who grew, they grew very, very fast. More or less 20% after the latest polls. Uh, well, they had, they were over 20% in 2015. But around every fifth one in this country is ready to give the voice to a no. party which is uh, certainly xenophobic and working with these yes, metaphors. Yes, and that's of course a problem. But, but my point was that they grew very fast in 2015 when we had the big migration crisis in Sweden. A big after, migration crisis? After that, after that yeah. they have actually stalled. And they yeah, have but they're still uh, around 20%. But the big migration moment, 200,000 refugees in the last two years? More or less? Well, 163,000 in 2015, and um, another. And the an, Swedish population. And, a, and is another 30,000 in Yes, two, around 200,000. Uh, 250,000? Yes, in, these two, in the last two years. The yes. Swedish population is around 10 million. Again, 200 or 250,000 refugees in the last two years. This represents 2% of your population. What is the problem? Well, the problem was that that when uh, there was a lot of refugees coming to Europe in, in 2015, uh, Sweden and Germany and some other countries, but not that many, took a larger responsibility than any others. But that was in 2015, uh, where we received 163,000 people. And but then, still, then two and a half percent, percent of your I, population. Yes, but may I also, may I answer your yes, questions? Yes, but I have to add, yes, two and a half I, percent. Yes, but may I ask, may I answer your question? Uh, 163,000 came in 2015. Then we had to take measures to stem the flow, which we did. Border controls, the ID controls, and also the new legislation. So after that, last year we had 30,000. And now we have a control over that situation. But it all comes down to uh, uh, the problem that Europe does not take this, this but, issue as, but let, as a continent. Let us speak about Sweden. Extreme right membership is also on the rise. Expo publication reported a growth in membership that has translated into more than 3,000 events by the Nordic resistance movement in 2016. Yes. And we have so problems. nothing got better. Well, well we, no, I'm, I'm saying, I am saying that we have problem with with some uh, right wing extremist groups. Of course, we have. And How as big I, are as these I think, problems? Well, in the, in 2015, we had problems with with the people trying to to burn down the re reception centers. That was one kind of one hundred twelve fires last year yes. at refugee reception centers. Yes, yes. sixteen. Yes, so what's your point? I'm my, asking, my po I'm my curious, point I'm curious to listen to your judgment of your own, but these are, of your own country, of your population. These are extremist groups which we of course uh, need to, to, uh, to combat in that, in the sense by, 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 uh, by the police. That's but not it's, it's not sufficient, isn't it? Well, you always have to prove that someone has done some, some uh, a crime before you can sentence them. I mean, uh, Sweden is, is a, uh, this is, is a state. No, I, We're speaking you, about the society. The, What's the, going on the, in the society? The, well, you are not the only country. 
Um, the other countries, like also Germany, but especially also France, have the same problems. My question is only, how do you judge uh, the danger of these cases, also politically? Well, we have, we, actually, we have always had groups, uh, extremist groups like, like this. Uh, in the recent years, they have been more active. And that is a, a threat to, well, to, our, uh, to uh, individuals, but also in, in, in the long run, of course, to, to the society. So it's a, it is a problem, of course it is, but we are doing what we can in order to fight it. Let's talk about another problem of violence. In April, a terrorist attack with a truck killed, killed five people and injured 19 in central Stockholm. The perpetrator was an asylum seeker. Do you think there is a relationship between your migration policy and these terrorist acts? Well, I mean, crime connected to asylum seekers are very, very few. Uh, it is, there is no direct link uh, like that. But, uh, of course, as in every country, we've had problems with people getting radicalized in different ways. And we have to, uh, to be better to, to trace them as, as uh, soon as we can and also to to uh, uh, sentence them for the crimes that they are committing. Then help me um, with this quote. After the attack, your prime minister himself condemned the open door policy. He said, Sweden will never go back to the mass migration we had in autumn 2015. Never. This was not a quote about controls. This is a principal quote about migration policy. Why? Well, in 2015, we, uh, when we had over 10,000 coming a week, of course, then in that situation, we did not have control. That's why we introduced the IDA controls and the border controls. And nowadays, we have that. Do you think that your migration and integration policy is on the right way? Well, after 2000, the 2015 crisis, we have been able to process most of all the applications and they are, they are now going out on the, on the Swedish labor market that, that is growing faster than most other countries are doing. You, you are seeing that our unemployment rate is falling, our state budget is uh, uh, in order, we actually have, have, have surpluses, so we are managing that. But at the same time, we of course must be, be very vigilant on different uh, extremist uh, activities, both on the right-wing side, but also on the Islamic But let's be, let's be honest, sense. we know that the migration crisis didn't end in 2015. There is now a certain impression uh, that the problem is not anymore as actual. But it is. What happens, what will happen, well, if migrants will and want to come back to Sweden, to come to Sweden? Well, we have said we, we cannot go back to 2015 situation again. It's a question That's of what, quantity? Well, we cannot handle a situation where we, we already had 160 to 3,000 coming in one year, and we still have 60,000 waiting to get their, their applications processed. We cannot have a situation where that goes out I of control anymore. I have to ask anymore. again, is this statement uh, due to the uh, controls, it is, or is it due to the number? It is due to the, to, to the number in that sense. We cannot have Why? a situation where... Two and a half percent till now of a population, one of the richest countries. Why this because, is too much? Because, well, we don't have... Um, on the, I, I, I'll put it this way. I think on the labor market, uh, I think I'm not that concerned uh, right now because we have a very good development on the labor market. We so this one, is even we advantage. Have, yeah, yeah, we have 100,000 available jobs. Uh, we have um, and a decrease in the unemployment rate. So that's good. But our problem is, is in other sectors. Housing is one of them. We have to, uh, to uh, be able to build much more houses in order to, to get, I mean, get roof over, over people's head. And uh, even though that we are building now more than we've done for 40 years, still, I mean, if we should have an inflow of another let's say 100,000 this year, 
there could be absolutely no but possibility the for of us. housing were not due to the migration crisis. Well, it, it is now. It is now because after when we are now have have uh, processed all their applications, now they're getting out in the municipalities, and we have to have houses. Well, for them. I understand the point. So houses is one. Teachers is another for all the children. Um, uh, social services. So how many years do you need? to tell to the migrants in Africa or wherever, now we are prepared for another few of you. Now, uh, we, haven't, we haven't shut our borders. There are still people coming into Sweden. I think we have f between 400 and 500 people, asylum seekers, each week coming to Sweden. So we haven't shut our borders, but we now have a level which we can handle. And we didn't have that in 2015. So let's, let's speak about migration. In February, riots broke out in the neighborhood of Rinkeby in Stockholm, mainly an immigrant community. Protesters attacked the police, destroyed property and burned cars. How do you explain the explosion of violence in Stockholm? Well, that is in many, as in many other countries around the world, I would say. Um, effects of, uh, of that, that people have been excluded from, from society. They haven't got, gotten any jobs, they haven't got, got a proper Who education. Who excluded these people from well, the society? Well, you have, if you have a long, term, long period of time where people are not, a, uh, are not getting into the labor market, sooner or later this will cause social disturbances. These people were not asylum seekers, but they were, they were people who have, many of them have been grown up in families where, where they have got that, that, uh, those of them are Swedish of those citizens. Opportun oh yes, most of them I would say. Many of them are born in Sweden. Most of them haven't got uh, the opportunities that they should have, uh, have got. So the issue here and the key here is the ordinary things like access to education, and uh, unemployment. But so these events are if, if proving if that integration policy is not a very big success. As you are saying, according to the Stockholm's national statistics, about 90% of the population in Rinkeby are immigrants or have backgrounds. This is a typical characteristic of a ghetto. How could it happen that cities in Sweden ended with ghettos? Well, well I've been to the ghettos in the United States. And I will say, do not compare that situation. I don't compare them do with not compare United that States. I compare with, them with uh, ghettos but, uh, well, in Sweden. Yes, ninety percent of I, the population. I, I, I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. But I don't know if you have visited any of our areas. Have you? Yes. 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 It's a I, ghetto. I, have, have I mean, ninety percent of the population is coming from a background which is a very specific one. A lot of unemployment, a lot of poor people, a lot of people without a big hope for future. You just mentioned it. Yes. But Again, what didn't work till now in the migration but, policy? But do not compare it to the, the ghettos in the big American cities. It is a completely different uh, So arena. let's speak about what's but, going but on and not about you, the world. You, but you do have, you, there is, I mean, the point here is that we need to have a, a better um, situation on, on unemployment, for instance. And that's why it, it is good now that we see, we have a prognosis that came out yesterday, I don't know if, you, if you've seen that, that just for 2017 and 2018, we will create, create 150,000 new jobs in but Sweden. For most well of those, educated most people. Of, no, most of those people, eight out of, those, eight out of ten out, out of these jobs will go to peop, people who are born outside Sweden, according to the, to, to, the, to the prognosis. So the labor market in Sweden is very strong, and, it, and, these, and the people that really need these jobs can benefit from that. Now. That's interesting, because among the immigrant population, unemployment statistics are saying around 20% are I coming from these groups to among 4% Swedes. What the, are you doing to close the gap? I think that the number now is 16% out of people. Does it make it better? Uh, no, 16% of the people who are born outside Sweden is on, uh, unemployed. 4% uh, are unemployed uh, from the people who are born in, inside Sweden. So that's the gap which we have to, to get down. But the, the thing is now that when we now have a situation where we have, have had very high growth rate in Sweden, 4% growth rate in 2016, 
and another uh, and another three and a half percent now. I mean that means that the new the new jobs are now coming. They, and when the number of people who are born in Sweden, their growth, their unemployment rate is very low. Of course, now next in line is the people who are born outside Sweden. But and they are also getting jobs now. Yes, but let us continue to speak about what's going on in this society. In December, in December, a report commissioned by Sweden Civil Contingencies Agency spoke about the growth and operation of the Muslim Brotherhood in Sweden and claims that the organization has been building parallel social structures in Sweden. Parallel structures? Yes, and I mean that's a, a uh, of course, a, a very big problem where there, when there are people who are trying to to establish some some uh, uh, legal order of themselves. I mean, it's but it didn't it, start it, now. It the is, Muslim Brotherhood has been yeah. in Sweden since the 70s. Why this as, government as, and others didn't react? As under? they have been in every country in, in the European Union, I, I would say. But the radicalization but the is clear. Yes, but that's why we, for instance, criminalized the uh, the uh, the. The acts of, of of going abroad to uh, to join ISIS, we criminalized that a year ago, and and, and I'd say by doing so, uh, these kind of journeys has, I'd say, almost stopped. We've had 300 people going there, 150 coming back, uh, but that is not the case anymore. But the ideology of the Muslim Brotherhood is not only the concern that terrorists are going to Syria. It's a question in the societies and of the radical, radicalization in the society. The author of the document... And we don't, and we don't, ban, we don't ban views, but we, we ban acts. As if they are into any kind of uh, uh, activities connected to, to, to terrorism, of course that's an issue for the police. Um, but there is plenty of anecdotal evidence that shows that the very radical Islam has roots in Sweden. In August of last year, there were reports of Muslim schools segregating children according to gender. Um, women are discussing about um, the behavior also in this question. Um, what is the society reacting? How is this government reacting? What are you doing against all these problems? Well, for instance, according to the schools, it's uh, extremely important that we have a uh, surveillance of what are, what are going on in the schools. We cannot accept having... But it happens. Ha we cannot accept having a school separating girls and, and, and boys. And that's why, if, if that is the case, then we simply have to close down that school. When? Well, we have, well, yes, but when it comes up, then it's an, it's an issue for our, for our surveillance. So board let's board. talk about something so, which is... And they have the opportunity, they have the possibility to close that down. Yeah, but there is another issue where you would answer, I have to do. Let's talk about anti-Semitism. There have been several reports on anti-Semitism attacks and harassments in Sweden. Does the country have problems with anti-Semitism? As, as I'd say, many countries has. But we take it that very seriously also. And of course, if we see any, any kind of that, then it's... But it's you have even a minister for housing and urban development who's compared Israel to the Nazi Germany in your government. You want the name? Yes, I, Kaplan? As I, I know the guy, but I, I actually don't remember that phrase. Yeah, that's interesting. That's, that's no, I don't, can you... Yeah, this was in, uh, in uh, between 14 and 16 he was minister and he compared Israel to Nazi Germany. Yes, I, I, don't, that, uh, I don't remember that, that phrase, but as you also, as you also know, he, uh, he resigned from government. But again, um, Nazi neo groups like the Nordic resistance movements are targeting Jews. In Ulmea, yes, in Malmö. Yes, and that's, and that's why we have to fight that kind of right-wing extremism. When? And why now? And what did you do till now? Things didn't get better. Well, I mean, even you can, t you can uh, tighten the legislations as we, as we have done. Uh, but I think that there is, there is always a risk that you, that you don't find everyone. 
but we have to do, of course, more and, and be, be ready to, to, to strengthen that but you found, legislation too. you found one. You are not only the Minister um, of Migration, but you're also the Minister of Justice. Recently, you dropped charges of rape against WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange after seven years. It took some of the country's brightest legal minds seven well, years to figure out that there was no case to bring forth? Seven no, years? No, 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 no. That was, I mean, the, the, the situation was that he, he flew from, from the country. He did not want to stay in Sweden. Nothing, did, nothing he did changed. Not, he did not want to stay in Sweden to be interrogated. So what? So, Nothing changed. Why? Well, so I mean, so the blame is on him, not on Sweden. Why did you need seven years, and now you are closing the case? Well, because uh, first of all, it's a prosecutor that is doing this uh, investigation. It's not the government. It's a prosecutor. Uh, second, I mean, the blame is on Julian Assange. He uh, decided. We are speaking he decided, about the legal system. He decided not to stay in Sweden in order to. To, uh, I'm in sorry. order to answer questions about the, uh, so about why did what you close happened. the case? Because so, because we asked him. Well, you have to come to Sweden so we can interrogate you. That's the uh, but th the that's way what the doing. charges suddenly came into the suspicious and what that uh, being suspicious and now the way they were suddenly dropped is just as suspicious. This looks well, bad. Doesn't it? No. Uh, well, I mean, what is, look, what is looking bad is that Julian Assange did not want to come to Sweden to, uh, to uh, explain and to be interrogated. That but, looks bad. But he's a young man. He has time to come. And the, and the justice in this country has time to wait. My question well, is, my why question, are you closing why, suddenly because, in the seventh because year? The, because the prosecutor came to the decision that we cannot proceed with, uh, with this. We don't get any more information. That's why they did it. That's the prosecutor. That's not about the government. That's not the government decision. It's the prosecutor. But again, um, uh, the question that, would you, that must, must be raised is to Julian Assange. Why does he, didn't he want to come to Sweden to answer uh, in, He's in been this, uh, languishing law. in the Ecuadorian embassy for five years, and now he faces charges for jumping bail. Are you going to intervene on uh, Assange's behalf? Will you help him? Uh, the government does not interfere with ongoing prosecutions. It's not the, uh, it's not the way that things are, are, are done in Sweden. This is uh, the legal authorities that are that is handling this. Would but, you say that the accusation... Um, towards Assange are really as serious as at I, the beginning? I don't evaluate it. I just, I'm just saying that there are people that has, uh, that, uh, has filed a... Uh, there is an ongoing... Uh, there are people that have, said, that have said that they have been victims of wrongdoing, victims of crime that Julian Assange has committed. That is what they are saying. Thank you they, very much. These pe and these, <laughs> let me finish yes. that. These people also actually has the right to to uh, to be able to uh, to be vindicated, and that's why w w the whole uh, the whole system is is working. Morgan Johansson, thank you very much for being in conflict zone. Mm, thank you. Thank you.